Hello everyone, welcome to day 1st of March Recode Challenge and I wish all the viewers of Coding Decoded channel a very happy Mahashivratri. The question that we have in today is counting bits. Here in this question we are given an integer value n. We need to identify the number of ones that exist in all the numbers starting from 0 up till n. We need to return the count of ones in the binary representation of all such numbers in the form of an output array. For example, here n happens to be 2 and there will be 3 numbers 0, 1 and 2. We need to count the number of 1 in the binary representation of these numbers and return it as the output. I will be walking you through two approaches to solve this question in the presentation. So let's quickly hop on to it. Counting bits, lead code 338. It's an easy level question on lead code and I totally feel the same. After solving this question, you will understand how important it is to analyze these test cases. At times, when you analyze all the test cases appropriately, then the answer lies in front of you. Without further ado, let's talk about the solution. So here I have represented numbers starting from 1 till 20 and let's, let's assume in the question it was specified that the value of n happens to be 20. What we can do, we can start the iteration starting from 0 up till 20 and we can generate the binary representation of each number. We can count the number of ones that exist in the binary representation and return the final output as the answer. This is naive and a basic approach that comes to everybody's mind when they read this question. However, can we do something better than this? The answer is yes. So for that, let's analyze few numbers. What are those numbers? Let's start with 2. If you look at the binary representation of 2, you can see that it holds only one one at the second index. If you go and look at the binary representation of 4, again, you will see that it contains the same number of ones as 2 contains. It's just that the position of 1 has been modified, but the number of ones remains the same. So let's write that here. Why does it remain the same? Because when you perform the left shift operation of 2, you get 4. Left shift operation simply means you are multiplying the number by 2. As a result of which, the number of 1s in 2 and 4 remains the same. So let's proceed ahead. Let's again perform the left shift operation. Which number do we get? We get 4 into 2 which is 8 highlighted over here. Again you can see the number of 1 remains the same which is 1. Let's move further ahead. Let's perform the left shift operation on 8. What do we get? We get 16. So here the number of 1s again remain the same. Pretty awesome and quite understandable. So whenever we are multiplying the number by 2, the number of 1s remains the same in the generated number or the output number. Let's take few other cases. Let's take the case of 3. Or So here what do you see? You see that the number has two ones in it. So let's write two here. And let's talk about the same scenario. We perform the left shift operation. When we perform the left shift operation, what do we get? We get six. Again in six, the number of one remains the same. Let's perform the left shift operation on six. What do we get? We get 12. So in 12, the number of ones again remain the same, which is two. So here we are just sliding it towards the left. So these two ones have been slided towards left and we get this number. And since 24 is beyond our range, I'm not writing it over here. But again, in that number, the number of two remains the same. Let's take few more possibilities and let's shoot for five this time. So what do we see? The number of ones in five happens to be two. And let's perform the left shift operation by a single unit. What do we get? We get 10. And the number of 1 again remains the same, which is 2. Again in 20, the number of 1 remains the same. You are performing just left shift operation by a, six, by a single unit. And the number of 1 remains the same, that is 2. If you have understood this much, you have understood 50% of the algorithm. Now let's talk about the rest of the part. What we are going to do, we are going to draw pairs here. And I'll talk you how these pairs are helping us arriving at the solution. So if we know the number of 1s in 2, can we draw the number of 1s in 3? The answer is yes. It will be 1 higher than that of the even index. 
So add the even index, which is two. What are the how many are the number of ones? It happens to be one. So you add one to it, and you get the number of ones in three, which is two. Similarly, for generating the number of ones in four, you can use the previous half position. So when you divide four, what do you get? You get two. So using two, you can generate the number of ones in four, which will be same as that of two. Which is one. So you you have you can identify the number of ones in four and three using two. Let's proceed ahead. Next, what do we do? We can simply check the number of ones in five using four. Consider these two as pairs. So number of ones in four happens to be one. You add one to it, you get two. Pretty awesome and straightforward. Again, let's move ahead. The next number that we have is six. So we can identify the number of ones in six using three. So we divide this number by two. What do we get? We get three. Number of ones in three happens to be two. As a result of which, the number of ones in six again happens to be two. So far, we have built the table up till six. Let's proceed ahead. Next, we see is seven. Seven happens to be odd in nature. Since it's odd, you'll look out for immediate lower value at the even index. Seven minus one is six. The number of ones in six happens to be two. So You add one to it. What do you get? You get three. So you update it to three. Let's proceed ahead. Next we see is eight. Since eight is even in nature, what we will do? You'll divide that number by half. You get four. The number of ones in four is one. As a result of it, the number of ones in eight again happens to be one. Let's proceed ahead. Next we see is nine. Nine is odd in nature. Since nine is odd, you will look out for immediate lower value, which is eight. Eight is even. You check the number of ones in that number, which is one, and you add one to it. So you, what do you get? You get two. So far, we have built the list up till nine. Let's proceed ahead. Next, we see is ten. So ten is an even number. Whenever you see an even number, what do you do? You divide it by two. What do you get? You get five. You check the number of ones in five, which is two. So you add two here. Pretty awesome. Let Let's proceed ahead. Next, we see is eleven. Eleven is odd in nature. You will fall back to checking the number of ones in ten, which is two, and add one to it. So the binary representation of eleven is something like this. Sorry for the typo. And the number of one comes out to be three. Let's proceed ahead. You see twelve. So twelve being an even number, what do you do? You check the number of ones in six that you have already computed. So you copy paste the same value over here. So it gets two. Let's proceed ahead. Next we see is thirteen. Thirteen is an odd number. What do you do? You check the number of ones in twelve, which is two. So two plus one gives you three. So you add three here. Let's proceed ahead. Next we see is fourteen. At fourteen, what you will do? It's an even number. You'll fall back to seven. So fourteen by two is seven. Seven has three ones. As a result of which, fourteen will also have three ones. Let's proceed ahead. Next we see is fifteen. Number of fifteen is an odd number. So what do you do? You check the number of ones in fourteen, and you add one to it. So three plus one is four. As a result of which, the answer becomes four. Let's proceed ahead. Next we see is sixteen. Sixteen is an even number. You what do you do? You divide it by two. You simply go and check the number of ones at eight. At eight we see one. As a result of which, the answer becomes one. Let's proceed ahead. Next we see is seventeen. Seventeen is an odd number. What do you do? You You check the number of ones in sixteen and add one to it. So one plus one gives you two, and the answer becomes two. Let's proceed ahead. Next we see is eighteen. Eighteen is an even number. What do you do? You divide that number by two. You get nine. The number of ones in nine is two. As a result of it, the answer here becomes two. Next, going ahead, we see nineteen. Nineteen is an odd number. You fall back to eighteen. You check the number of ones in two. You add one to it. The answer becomes three. Next, you see is twenty. Twenty is an even number. What do you do? You divide that number by two. You get ten. The number of ones in ten happens to be two. As a result of it, the answer here becomes two. In this manner, we have successfully identified the number of ones in all the numbers, starting from zero up till n. And this is the way to go. To conclude it further, let's quickly have a look at the coding section. Here I have created the answer array, and it it will be of size nums plus one because we are looking for the range starting from zero up till n. And by default, nums of zero will be zero. You can skip this statement, or you can write it to be explicit. 
you start the iteration from i equals to 1 i is less than equal to n uh, nums and uh, with each iteration you will increment the pointer of i if i happens to be of even value even in nature what do you do you divide the what you divide i by 2 and you check the corresponding answer that had has already been set and you copy paste that value at ans of i otherwise if i is odd you simply compute the answer from the even index i minus 1 and add 1 to it in the end you simply return ans the time complexity of this approach is order of n and the space complexity again is order of n for building the answer this brings me to the end of today's session i hope you enjoyed it if you did please don't forget to like share and subscribe to the channel thanks for being it have a great day ahead and stay tuned for more operation coding decoded i'll see you tomorrow with another fresh question but till then goodbye